Marshall's Le Pliage handbag is one of the most iconic, best-selling handbags out there today. You will be hard-pressed to not spot one if you go to a major city, but there's something we need to talk about because something about it has changed and not for the better. There is a way to address that. We'll talk about that too. Let's get into it. I got its start in 1948, first covering pipes with leather. Then it moved on to small leather goods like passport covers. And then by the 70s, it was making beautiful duffel bags. Fast forward to 1993, the first year that Longchamp's Le Pliage foldable bag was released. And it has been an icon ever since. The first time I started seeing this regularly was about the year 2003 when I visited New York City for the first time and I could not believe how many women of all ages, stages, demographics were carrying Le Pliage. I'm talking 16 year old to 86. First of all, what even is this bag? It is a nylon tote bag and it's very, very light. That is, in my mind, it's best quality. The large Le Pliage weighs just 290 grams and for context, for those of you who don't use grams that often, when I usually get ham sliced at the deli I asked for 300 grams so it's very light. It has leather detailing including this flap here, supple leather handles that are comfortable because they lay nice and flat on the arm and it is relatively affordable compared to other luxury items including Prada which also sells nylon bags but costs many multiples of the Longchamp. This is a tote bag. I've got the large size here I believe it's called the shoulder tote in original and you'll know it's original because it has this sort of cognac colored leather. Whereas I think there's another line called Neo and the notable thing about the Neo is the, ha the handles, this flap and the bag are all the same color. Helen in editing here, I don't know why I keep calling it the Neo. I keep calling it that subsequent times as well. It's actually called the green. When they're contrasted like this, it's the original. Even though this bag is not expensive, there are a lot of fakes on the market, so I would really caution you maybe against purchasing from a source where you're not 100% sure of the provenance of it. Because yes, it's not super expensive, but do you really wanna buy a fake? Of course not. So I've been wearing Longchamp bags proudly for the last 15 years, and the one that I have here is eight years old. So this is a little bit older than some of the other reviews that I'm seeing on this. So I just wanted to do a bit of a deep dive and compare and contrast the quality of this old one compared to what I'm hearing about and seeing right now. Now, the idea behind this bag is that it's a shopper, or at least in the large size. The idea is you go to work and on your way back home, maybe you stop by to grab a little bit of food, some groceries, you know, and you pop them in here and it's discreet and not ugly like a plastic shopping bag. In fact, once I went to a grocery store and I was just stuffing this full of groceries and the woman was looking, the cashier was looking at me like either in horror or because she just could not believe how much stuff I was getting into it. It really does hold a lot. You've seen people stuff it with laptops, you know, makeup pouches, a wallet, sunglass case. It definitely does hold a lot of stuff. Now there's some other really good videos from other content creators that I'm gonna link down below along with a link to this actual bag if you wanna see it. Head down below into the description box. I'll also put those same links in the comments if you prefer to have a look that way as well. The Le Pliage is an absolutely amazing travel bag where you can fold it up and put it inside your suitcase. So I have an even older one in purple and I just wanted to show you what this looks like folded up. Uh, you can't tell, but I'm gonna show you for scale. There's my mouse on top of it. It gets quite compact and let's just have a look at the stitching. The stitching on this is exquisite. It is so nice. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the stitching on this is probably even a little bit better than my Louis Vuitton Speedy. It's just so good. You can just wear it around and beat it up every day like I do. I take it to the beach with me when I'm on vacation. I take it around the city. I drop it on floors. I am not kind at all to this bag and yet it is held up really good. But I think the same can't be said with some of the new ones I'm hearing about and well, we'll tell you more about that. Before we do that though, here's a look at mine. It has some pretty gentle wear on the shoulders. The corners blew out. They've been repaired. We'll talk about that in a second. That's very normal for this bag and a turn off for a lot of people. Something to note when they do repair the corners, it makes the, the base a little bit smaller because they refold it and they re-sew it. You can end up with a bag where the base is smaller and therefore you end up with a little bit less capacity something to keep in mind. However, mine was repaired and I've never really noticed a difference in the internal capacity. I don't think anyone has shown you this before, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like, a repaired version in terms of a non-repaired version and how you lose a little bit of capacity on the base. So here we go. This one is, let's see, about 
Sorry, you guys, I know this is quite hard to see, but exactly 21 centimeters. And this one is closer to 22, I'd say 21 and a half centimeters. So a bit of a difference there. So I've been looking through a lot of Longchamp Le Pliage videos about both the original, like I have, and the Neo, which is, as we said, the sa all the same color. And I'm noticing the same comment pop up now and again, which is that the corners now wear out very, very quickly. Some people are saying their corners wear out with just a couple uses. And not only that, this has been the experience of my mom who bought a small one. She uses the more medium sized one with the shoulder handle. That's her favorite style. She repurchased and she could not believe that the corners blew out in just a few uses. And my mom is gentle with her handbags. Unlike me, she doesn't just plop hers on the floor or just generally beat it up like I do to mine. Now I've seen enough people mention this that I think it probably is a problem and here's how to deal with it if this ends up happening to you and you purchase one and it's something to be aware of, which is that Longchamp does repairs on the corners. You can get it repaired one time in its lifetime and they will repair those corners. This has happened to me with every Longchamp bag I own. Luckily a mall near me has an actual Longchamp store so you bring it in there and then they sent it to I believe the New Jersey facility back when I got it done and then maybe three weeks later it was you know they gave me a phone call to let me know that it was ready for pickup. When I say that they repair it one time I mean that they repair it one time for free under warranty. Yes Longchamp actually has a warranty and not many other even of the highest luxury brands have this other than Bottega Veneta. This repair, a repair I had done before it, and a repair I had done for my mom's purse all looked really good. They do a nice job. Please drop a note down below in the comments if you've experienced this issue with a recently purchased Longchamp Le Pliage. I think it would be good for all of us to know. I kind of didn't want to start talking about this and doing like the worst possible citizen journalism, but I figured that if it's a problem, then Longchamp will know and they will address it. And if I'm wrong, well, I'm wrong. And then you get pleasantly surprised when this doesn't happen to you. I'm very much not an expert on nylon bags. I have had a number of them in my life. I've had a number of Le Pliage bags over the last decade and a half. I don't know why the ends would be wearing out so quickly on the latest batch of them, if that indeed is what's happening. It occurs to me maybe it's because the nylon is not as supple and it is fragile and more breakable. I can't imagine why, if they're all sewn the same way, the corners would be blowing out so quickly on them, but it is not good if that is indeed happening because nothing makes this look less polished than walking around with big busted corners that look ragged and jagged. And for the price point, that certainly should not be happening, especially when the quality has been so good in the past. If you're enjoying this video so far, please do consider dropping me a like and subscribing and be sure to leave a comment below. So my mom very kindly sent us some photos of her bag so that we could have a closer look. She purchased this not very long ago. I can definitely attest to the fact that it is not an old bag. And you know, she has this problem basically straight off the hop and that is upsetting. Who's made of money? right? I mean, really a couple uses, it should be able to last longer than that. A lot of people think this bag is too expensive for what it is. And I don't actually believe that to be the case because as I said, I've had mine for eight years. I wear it daily. It looks good and it elevates to a small degree my look, because if I weren't wearing this, I'd be using something kind of ratty, maybe like a tote bag or something like that. It is just so handy. It just has a nice polished look about it. Look, say what you want about French luxury houses. They know how to make something that has a cute silhouette and will make you look a little bit more elevated. They've always been excellent at this particular conjuncture of traits and this bag is no exception. Is it a bit basic? Yeah, absolutely it's a bit basic, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. A lot of things become basic because they're just good. They're just worth buying and rebuying and they spread like wildfire. This is the part where I admit to you that I have actually snuck a rotisserie chicken in somewhere I shouldn't have with this bag. So not only is it good for holding laptops and stuff like that, it can sneak like chickens into movie theaters. Okay, please don't judge me. <laughs> it's a long story, but you can hide a lot of stuff in this bag. In terms of caring for it, in terms of washing it and cleaning it, of course you can just wipe it off with a sponge. If you get a stain on it and the lighter colors do tend to accumulate random unidentifiable stains, take it to a dry cleaner. They can probably get it out for you, especially if you know what it was that went into it. What I like to do with mine though, is just stick it inside a, lingerie, a very large lingerie bag and just wash it in the gentle cycle in a washing machine. Uh, a friend of mine washes hers in the bathtub. You can wash them at home too hang them up. But again, they do stain even the darker colors. I've had ones that have stained before and they just end up being these sort of mystery stains and you either can live with it or you can't, but that is something to keep in mind. 
That's why you see a lot of people choose them in the darker colors. If you get a really light color, chances are it's not gonna look good after a couple of years, it'll be dirty. But of course, your mileage with your lifestyle may vary. I use the subways now and again here where I live and so that is just not an option for me. I know that they will get filthy in a matter of days. For the Longchamp Le Pliage, they will repair not only the corners, but it has happened to me one time that one of the circular parts, the circular plastic parts inside that holds the button on the outside. If you have one of these, you know what I'm talking about got chipped and every time I would stick my hand in there, this jag would jag me inside my thumbnail. So I brought this issue up to the sales associate at the Longchamp store and she said, I think that this is actually something that they may repair. Lo and behold, they did at no cost to me. So again, the way the repairs work is you just go into the shop, you show them the bag, show them what's going on with the corners. And usually it's pretty straightforward. They write up a ticket, they give you, you know, a paper piece of it and they give you a call. It's kind of an old fashioned way of handling a repair, but I am kind of into it. I, I've been really happy with their service so far. The cost of Le Pliage does not go up very much from year to year. And I really have to give them credit for doing this and keeping this under, for the most part, the $200 mark. It has always been in the 100s. Unlike your Chanel's, unlike your Louis Vuitton's, those places are ridiculous. Even for non-leather, they've just gone up and up and up in prices every year, really taking advantage of inflation. So Longchamp has not done that. They've really done whatever it is they need to do to keep it affordable for us. And we thank them for that. And even just for that reason alone, I never hesitate to recommend this, except for the corner issue. But we're gonna have to see how that pans out in years from now. Maybe there is an issue. Maybe, maybe my mom and the other people just got a dud somehow or something that was just, the textile was not up to spec. I don't know, but it is still a really excellent bag. One significant con of this bag is that it's just a big black hole. When you drop something in it, you can't find it. So the number of times my hand is rumbling around and they're trying to find my phone or my house keys, which have inevitably gone to the very, very bottom and are completely out of reach or are just sort of wedged in with something else is like 100% of the time. It's really frustrating in that regard, but many people do buy like an internal organizer made out of felt or something and they get those from like Etsy or wherever, but I don't bother doing that. I just struggle. Some people wonder whether Longchamp is actually a legitimate French luxury brand, and it absolutely is. It has a very long history dating from 1948 of being a leather goods house based in Paris, France. We so very much associated with these less expensive nylon handbags, but it has a really long history of making higher end leather goods and still makes relatively expensive leather purses in this silhouette and other silhouettes. You have your ultra prestige brands like Chanel and like Louis Vuitton and like Hermes. This is not one of them, but it is a high echelon brand for sure. However, because it's not in the upper tier of luxury brands like your Chanel's, the resale value on these is very low. So you're not really gonna buy these to invest in them. Buy these Le Pliage bags to love them, enjoy them, and just wear them till they basically fall apart. That's what I do anyway. <laughs> It's also worth noting they're appropriate for every single age range. You could have a young teenager and she will look cute carrying this. You could have anybody, you have guys carrying the more travel sized ones or wearing them as a purse as well. You have women that are elderly and the key thing, the key trait that makes these awesome is they weigh nearly nothing. So if you're someone who hates a heavy backpack and you just wish that it was appropriate to wear a book bag, like tote, cotton, style thing all the time, but maybe you feel like you need to elevate your look a little bit for work or wherever it is that you're going. This is the perfect bag. And yeah, it's a tiny bit of a splurge, but I think it's within reach and you can save up for it for many of us, or you can ask for it as a gift. It is just very, very practical and you can hand it down. It will last provided that you don't completely blow out the corners, which can be repaired, but every time you subsequently repair it, the bottom gets a little bit smaller, as we have talked about. I also own this little cutie, excuse the headphones, I'm waiting for a call to come in. I also have this little cutie from my brother. It was a present from him. This is perfect to hold sunglasses. I've had this for a long time as well. The corners are in perfect condition though, because this is always a bag that I put inside of another bag. This can hold a phone, some lipsticks, even a few cards too, if you wanna to like tote it around. It can be a good one to take along with you if you're going like to an all-inclusive resort or something like that. That's not something I do all the time, by the way. Very simple, very cute. Interestingly though, the smaller things don't necessarily have a much smaller price tag. You know what I'm saying? Like the large pliage, I think is one of the best values out there in terms of the amount of material uh, and in terms of the amount of capacity that you get inside. Longchamp is named actually after a famous horse race track in Paris by the same name, Longchamp. Interesting thing about this, 45% of their workers are based in France, but they do have workers in Morocco and China. And inside each uh, product that they have, if you open the label, it will tell you where it is made. So you can definitely look at that. I've never looked at mine 
It says here made in China. You can have a look there. So there you'll see it says made in China. It is a privately held family run business. Interestingly, we don't know a lot of this behind the scenes stuff about their financials because it's a privately held family business. Inside my borderline vintage, I think this is almost a decade old, possibly older, and I had one before this that was navy blue, but this one says on it made in France. That could also be because this one was purchased in France. My friend brought it back for me uh, from Paris, or actually she got her mom to bring a whole bunch of these back for all of us office ladies at the time, which basically her mom became our purse mule, which is kind of funny. And this is my more recent one, which is still eight years old. And it says in here very faintly, because this label has been worn, made in Tunisia. So in the comments that I'm seeing, I'm not sure if they're talking about the green, the pliage, and I don't mean the color green, Green in this case means like eco-friendly recycled nylon or the original. People are not making it clear, but I do know that my mom has purchased the green one, so to speak, in graphite. And here's a picture of the one she purchased. And here's a picture of what's been going on in terms of the wear on the corners. It is just excessive, I think, for the amount of uses, which she says is like not more than seven uses compared to the years and years her other original ones have lasted. Very disappointing, right? I think that this is not acceptable. And I suspect it may have to do with just, this textile is probably not perfected. These are cuter. The cute thing about the green is that the color of the handle and the leather, the color of the handle and the clip are all one, so it has a nicer monochromatic. But obviously if they're gonna wear within a few uses, that is problematic. I suspect a lot of people have the green because Let's face it, this up is more appealing. If you don't have to have the sort of contrast cognac leather, it just looks much more chic to my mind in just the one color. It's very, very cute design. I don't think we can argue with that. Uh, one other difference with the green is you'll see that there is a noticeable, you know, the Longshell logo of the uh, horse rider on the horse on it, more visible here as well. My mom says though, the green versus the original textile, the nylon part of it feels exactly the same. One is not softer than the other. So if it is more brittle or just wears much more quickly, that's not something that's gonna be noticeable just from touching it. If you've had recent trouble with the corners, we wanna hear from you. Make sure that you drop a note down below in the comments and let us know what happened, how old yours is, and how it went down. Where this is getting kind of interesting is that the original bags are now recycled too, and I did not know this. I don't know if it's always been that way or when this changed. Again, let me look through here. Yeah, they're all recycled. So I guess now they're using a recycled nylon I'm all for that 100%, but not if it's gonna break within seven uses, then we're not any further ahead. You should have just used the new nylon and have it last seven years, no? So it's a mysterious mystery. I know the reporting was a little bit messy on this. Definitely, I am not exactly sure. Without photographs and detailed descriptions from other people who've dealt with this issue, I'm not exactly sure if it's just some or others or it's just the new ones or exactly what's going on. Maybe there was just a number of crappy batches. I have no idea. I just wanted to put it out there for you guys so that it is on your radar if this does end up happening to you. I definitely don't want to dissuade you from purchasing this bag if you really like it and you've been like saving up, stuff like that. Because again, it can be repaired if this does end up happening. But you know, just to give you my own personal experience and those of others, it takes years normally to get to this level of wear on the corners, provided that you have normal daily use. It usually takes me a few years and I'm very hard on my bags to blow out the corners and have to have them repaired. So uh, seven uses, it sh this should not be happening, for sure not. But I'm not saying yours necessarily will have this happen. I'm just saying that I've noticed a number of comments, too many to ignore, and I haven't seen anybody else address this issue here on YouTube, so I thought I would do it. I'm also a writer. I have a newsletter called helenavery.substack.com. It's completely free. We talk about issues like this, new products. I throw in some humor essays in there. Go ahead and sign up, and that would be much appreciated. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure that you drop this video a like, consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next video.